Three, two, one, one, two, three, Trinity. Ah, <gasps> what are these? They're shamrocks. You know, those little leaves with three different parts. They have three parts. And my clothing, what are they for? Well, you know, Green Day, you know, St. Patrick's Day. They represent St. Patrick's Day. You know, if you don't have clothing that is green on, someone could come and pinch you. So be careful. You need to have green clothing. It's a lot of fun. You know, you can watch and see, oh, they don't have green clothing. All right, fine. And you sneak up on them and you pinch them. It's just a lot of fun. But really, you know, why do we have St. Patrick's Day, Green Day? Why is that? Well, that day is a day that is a day of remembrance about a man who was named St. Patrick. Truly, that man was born Maywin. Sukat. That was his name. And then later he was known as St. Patrick. Really, why do we celebrate that day? Green Day. March 17th. That was the day of that man's death. The day of St. Patrick's death. March 17th. Hmm. Really, it's interesting. St. Patrick, he lived an interesting life. He was born in England, and he grew up there. And then, when he was 16, he was captured, and he was forced to become a slave, and he was brought to Ireland, and he became a slave there. And when he was captured and became a slave, what did he do? He went on a boat and traveled to Ireland. And when he arrived there, his work as a slave was caring for the sheep. And while he was caring for the sheep, he had a lot of time alone. He would take care of the sheep. And then it caused him to look up and think about God. He had a lot of time to pray and just commune with God, to talk to God. He really loved the Lord. And he continued to share from his heart. He would do that many times every day. He would just talk with God. And he had such a love for God that he wanted to serve God. And then one day, as he was praying, he was sleeping there, had a vision. St. Patrick had a vision. He would go home to England. And so he went, and he did actually later travel to England. But really, it was odd. It was strange. When he arrived to England... He felt like it really wasn't his home, that his home was really Ireland. He really had enjoyed his time being home in England with his family. He really desired to be with his family. But then, as he considered it, he felt that really his home was Ireland because that's where he had first really spent time in relationship with God, in relationship with the Lord. And he was so eager to go and share Jesus, share the gospel with the people, share about Jesus there in Ireland. And later, he actually did go. The church in England actually sent him to Ireland to share Jesus. And when he was there, he had so much difficulty, so many problems. But the tradition tells us about his life. That St. Patrick, his history, 
was that he used these. He used the shamrock, the clover. He used that little plant that had three different parts of its leaf to teach about Jesus, to teach about the Bible, to teach about the Trinity. The Trinity. Hmm, what's that? What's that word? Trinity. What does that mean? Ah, it means that there's God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. There's three in one. Three different persons, but all being the same. Three in one. Hmm? Three different people in one? What does that mean? God? Three? It's puzzling. But it's true. There are three different parts of God that are one. St. Patrick, he taught with that little leaf. He took that little leaf and showed that it had three different parts. The shamrock, that leaf, having three different parts, but those three different parts are still one leaf. Three in one. Hmm. Hmm. It's the same idea, the same concept that there's one God. There is just one God, but he has three different parts. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. Mm. That word, Trinity, That word, that exact word, is not in the Bible. It's not there listed in the Bible. But the idea and the concept is truly there. You see it again and again throughout Scripture. God is one, but he has three parts. In John chapter 17, there's a prayer listed there. Jesus was praying. He said, oh, Lord God, you and I are one. Oh, But I have concerns. I have concerns that the church, the Christians, that they live in unity with us. You see, the Bible said in that chapter, God gave each Christian a gift. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Truly, God is God. And truly, God is the Son, Jesus. And there's the Holy Spirit. God the Creator had a Son who was truly God too. And God wants us to understand how to live the right way, what to do. God seems so far away from us as people. And God knew that we would have a hard time to understand and relate. So God in His wisdom sent His Son Jesus to show us the right way. Truly, Jesus was a man, but Jesus was God. We look and read about Jesus, and you and I can study Jesus' life and know what to do. We can try to be like Jesus. Jesus shows us the way. But it's so important, too, that God gave all Christians the gift of who? God's Holy Spirit. You and I, now, we know that we have God the Father, who's the Creator, He's with us, Emmanuel, but we can't see his face. And now we know that Jesus has already lived and died and resurrected. And he arose and ascended. He's not here on earth right now. We might feel like we're left alone, but God in his wisdom has the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, when we accept Jesus Christ in our life, we receive the Holy Spirit to live in us. So we can depend on God. God, the Holy Spirit, comes in to comfort us, give us wisdom, give us leadership and guidance, to give us sensitivity and conviction 
so that we can avoid evil and sin and we can do what is right. You see, there are three, but those three are truly one. You see, that also in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, it says, in that verse, Jesus says, and he commands us, go into all the world, go forth and preach the gospel, the good news, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. (laughs) You see, truly there are three, but those three are one. Truly, there is God the Father. Truly, there is God the Son, Jesus. Truly, there is God the Holy Spirit. Truly, there are three, but they are one. One more example I want to share is when we look at Jesus' baptism. Jesus went to the Jordan River, and there he met his cousin, John the Baptist. He met him there, and he went ahead and was baptized there at the Jordan. We see that in Matthew chapter 3, verses 15 to 17, and it says, that when Jesus was baptized, when Jesus went to the river and into the water and up out of the water, it says that when Jesus was going under the water and coming up, when that happened, God sent a bird, a dove, to show the Holy Spirit coming upon Jesus lighting upon Jesus. And from the clouds in heaven, God said, the voice of God was heard. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You see, in that story, we see that there are truly three, but they are one. God the Father announcing, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He was announcing that Jesus was his son, that Jesus was showing righteousness, the righteous way, the fulfillment of righteousness had occurred in Jesus. And the Holy Spirit, when God the Father sent the dove, that bird, as it came down and lit upon Jesus, that was the example of the Holy Spirit. You see three, but one. Still, sometimes people go, that seems impossible. How can there be three in one? Hmm. Hmm. But truly, we see that God wants us to understand his word. And I have something I want to share with you. Water. Ah, water. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Water. Huh. Huh. Suppose you take some water and you put that water in a pan and then you turn up the heat on your stove. You turn it up, get it hot, and you wait a while and then that water begins to make steam. Steam. You have a pan you put it on the fire and with time passing then you'll see the steam rise that steam is truly water that has evaporated and one more good example is if you take water And you put it in your freezer. What will that become? Ah. Mm Mm-hmm. It will become ice. Ice. And that water becomes ice. Ooh, it's cold. Mmm. Ice. 
ice. But still, it's water. That ice is water. If you let that ice be left out in the heat in hot area, later it will melt. And it will become water again. <sighs> That ice will melt, and when it melts, you'll see the water. You see, there are three different parts. They're all water. They're all different. Water, steam, and ice. They're three different representations of water. And that's the same idea about God, the truth about God. There's God the Father, who's truly God. And God the Son, Jesus, who's truly God. And God the Holy Spirit, who's truly God. Three in one. When you're thinking about Green Day, St. Patrick's Day, I want you to think about St. Patrick and his teaching that he taught people to use this little shamrock, the shamrock, that little plant with a leaf with three different parts to teach the Trinity. Truly, there is God the Father. Truly, there is God Jesus the Son. And truly, there is God the Holy Spirit. Hmm. When you consider the love of God, God the Father loving us, His love is so great that He's given to us. And the love that we have with Jesus that was given to us, and the love of the Holy Spirit as our comforter, there is God. There are three parts of God. Think about that. Think about His love. His love. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> His love. The love, the love, the love of God. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, hoo, hoo. Oh, mm hmm. I can see it. <gasps> the love, the love, the love of God. God's love.